Hi, Chuck here again. Um, give you an update on some of the um, playing around with the aromas uh, CFL circuit. Um, so, uh, some of the things I've learned recently are uh, after watching a bunch of aromas uh, videos, um, he explained how to take apart these CFLs. Um, and uh, and so that's what you want to do. That was that was my mistake. I was trying to use a CFL, CFL intact, and um, in, inside one of these guys is a, a circuit board with quite a lot of com complex electronics. It looks like this, and if you uh, pop one of these puppies open, you can harvest all these wonderful parts. Um, anyway, with after doing that, uh, the uh, these bulbs light up just fine um, on their own with just uh, sort of hooking directly up to the wires here. Um, I'm also using a, uh, a spark plug as a spark gap. You can kind of see the spark happening here. You can cut, this is a sort of a cheap way of um, creating a spark gap. Uh, it, you know, it's funny how sort of the automotive supply stores have all the Tesla. Tesla technology with spark gaps and coils and so forth. Um, you can uh, push, obviously push the, uh, you can sort of adjust this gap by just pushing it with uh, pliers or something. Um, one thing I played around with was I tried to use a 555 timer and op optical isolation to keep the issue with putting a 555 timer directly on this thing is there's so much uh, oscillation and sort of inductive behavior happening with high voltages that any sort of uh, TTL chip is, would just absolutely freak out or even even uh, get ruined. Um, so I, I was thinking I could use op optical isolation and provide a better way to control uh, the frequency coming into this 2N2222 uh, transistor coming in on the base. Um, but anyway, I, f I completely failed because even with op optical isolation, there's still so much inductive stuff happening uh, just right through the air that the the, um, the square wave coming out of the 555 timer just gets all perturbed and uh, tweaked by you know things happening over here on the coil. Um, so the isolation would need to be a lot better. But you know, te Tesla did it with sort of just tank circuits, so m maybe it would be better if coming into that base was a tank circuit. Um, now, Lid, Lid Motor had uh, hooked up a, uh, a five mega ohm um, pot, and if you think about it, uh, that's really sort of a crude coil, and there's sort of natural uh, capacitance happening here. So we we do have a tank circuit coming into the um, into the transistor. It's sort of an implicit tank circuit. Um, and uh, so this thing self resonates to wherever it wants to resonate, but it's with the minor adjustment with the pot. Um, and so you can tweak this pot and, and you're sort of changing that tank circuit really to try to find the reson the place where it reson resonates the best. Um, but maybe a more sophisticated tank circuit, you know, somebody more experienced with electronics could sort of figure out a nice way to isolate this and make this more control controlled. I think the 555 timer approach is doomed to fail unless you sort of put it in a lead box or something and op optically isolate it and, you know, that all sounds kind of expensive and hairy. Uh, the trick here is to try to do this with cheap, off-the-shelf, inexpensive parts with uh, so that you know everyone around the world can replicate this. Um, so th those are my thoughts. Uh, this is uh, fun stuff. Oh, uh, one more th thing. I uh, was able to get this to run at a really low voltage. Something I tried and I'm just pretty amazed. I have this 9 volt battery here. Duracell. 9 volt battery. Okay. This battery I've been messing with today and I kind of... Uh, drained it down quite low. So if you look on the uh, voltmeter here, um, gee, I don't know if I can do this with one hand here. Ah.
struggling with this. There we go. Voltmeter. It shows it's about 8 volts. So that's a pretty dead uh, 9 volt battery. Uh, it's a brand new battery. I just uh, opened it up, but I kind of had been messing around with this circuit and some other circuits with it, and um, uh, before going to the 12 volts, because with with a 9 volt battery, it's a lot lower current, and when you're sort of converting to AC, you're you're a little bit safer. So I was draining this sucker down. Anyway, um, I'm going to hook this up to uh, Aramos's circuit here. And instead of uh, this long tube light I had, I'm just hooking up to this CFL. Now, one thing about the CFL is when they sell it at the store, it is a um, it's rated at uh, here we go 20 20 watts. Okay, 20 watts. So I hooked up my 9 volt battery, flipped this on, boom. It's lit. Pretty much full brightness. That running off of a 9 volt battery. Now I'm at 9 volts, uh, these, these uh, transistors don't get hot at all. So this is a uh, pretty impressive. Um, what I don't know is how long uh, this light can be run off of a 9 volt battery. That would be uh, a good question, but um, if you do the math, 20 watts, 9 volts, that battery would be dead in, you know, minutes. And yet, uh, here it is, happily glowing. In fact, I'll do the math. 20 divided by 9, 2.22 amps. Um, so uh, certainly this is a promising way with some different components, basically transistors and a coil, to, to run, this bat, run this light off of something as low as an 8 volt, sort of 9 volt battery here. Um, I think one thing that needs to be studied is how long this light will run. Um, also, uh, it flickers and it sort of changes, so um, that might be more evidence that it's pu pulling electricity from the ground. Very cool.